So once we got the four bolts out, you can see where they go. Uh, this drop right down, like the instructions. Next thing they tell you to do is remove your key cover. Now it snaps in, so it's a little bit of a twist. You got to have a pretty strong hand to unsnap it, and then that comes right out. You can see the locking tangs and how it works. So that's your key cover. Turns out you could do this without taking anything apart if you ever needed to take this off and clean in here. So that's just a quick tip there. And as you see, it just snaps back in. So quick snap there with a little strength in your hand. You got it. All right, so we'll continue on. Okay, the next step is to remove these cables. Now, you don't go prying around in there. I can't hold the flashlight, so hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here in the camera. But you just twist the cable to the side, and you'll see the slit in the red thing, and the cables come right out. All right, that's all you need to do. I wouldn't go messing around with these. There's a few other folks on Spider Lovers who messed with these and broke them. So it's pretty simple to just slide those over to the slot and pull those cables out. These cables control your uh, seat release and your trunk, okay? So those have to be out of the way. We've got that, we'll move on. Next step, uh, where's my flashlight again? Next step, the reason they wanted the cables out of the way is you need to remove these 10 millimeter bolts right here. All right, and I think the instructions say to toss them because you get new ones in the kit. Yep, so the instructions say toss them because they're going to give you new ones, obviously, with new Loctite on them. They don't want you reusing those. This is your steering assembly. So, uh, you know, if you're going to reuse them and you didn't get them, make sure you use Loctite. So we're going to take those out next. Okay, when I removed the two bolts, this went clunk in the back. Thank God I had a towel wrapped around. That's why they want you to do that. The next step shows that bracket coming off. And uh, not sure what this R is. Replace, I guess. And then this assembly, I think is the key switch, gets moved out or something. So I can't quite figure out what they mean by two down arrows, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's hope it's not as bad as uh, <laughs> other steps that aren't documented, but we'll come back and take a look. Yeah, so that was the idea. Basically, I pulled this up and pulled the entire key switch assembly out. Pretty basic. So those two bolts in that bracket in the back here behind this, behind these, is what uh, held that in place. So, all right, we'll continue on. Getting there, next step uh, from the manuals, they want you to remove these bottom screws uh, to remove these black plastic covers. Now, they are a Allen type wrench, not a Torx. I don't have a whole bunch of uh, Allen bits. I have wrenches, um, T handles, things like that for my RC helicopters, but uh, I did find a Torx would fit it, and they're not that tight. Now, they want you to bin these, so throw them away. The kit will come with these. Now, actually, I don't throw anything away. These will go in extra screw bins uh, on my workbench. But uh, anyway, you got one, two, three, four on each side, so that's eight total. Let's take those out and continue. I lied. I did need an Allen wrench uh, because the bits on some of these are too, the heads are too deep for a bit and a drive tool to fit up in there. So I just grabbed one of my trusty T handles. Uh, it looks like it's a three millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, so make sure you've got one to uh, get those out. Okay, next step is they want you to basically remove your your grip assemblies from each side. Remember I said there's a composite handlebar. Basically, they want you to take out these four bolts up here. Now, I have the added uh, uh, thing of this clutch assembly, since I'm, mine's an SM5. You, uh, you SE5 guys don't need to worry about this, but there's nothing in my manual that talks about this, so I'm going to go ahead and remove these four and see what it's going to take to remove the clutch assembly, or if I even need to. It looks like it's attached to the composite handlebar. Here's the tube that's under this bracket holding this on. I think it'll just come off with it, so I don't think no big deal. That's probably why the manual for this doesn't talk about it. But let's get those four out. You're going to bend those and do the same on the other side for the other uh, uh, grip assembly, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We'll come back take a look. That does it. You see it drop right off. There's the bracket that held them on, the four screws. Now, bad BRP, bad BRP. Three, two on this side and one on this side were not torqued down. They were loose. Now, maybe they came loose over, I almost have 10,000 miles now. 9,009 ,009 something to be exact. Uh, but they weren't torqued. And also there's no Loctite on them. Now, I know that's going into aluminum. But I don't know why there's not Loctite or at least a Lock Star Washer so or Lock Washer. So 
and you know you wouldn't want these coming loose while you're on the road so that's kind of interesting now this is my own two cents you know BRP may know better than I but I think when I put these back in if the new ones don't have Loctite I'm gonna put some blue on okay just to be sure just my experience on what I found that was loose I was very surprised to find two on this side and by the way they're on the both on the same side end not kitty corner or anything and one on the other side that was not torqued down I basically didn't even have to I just put the wrench on it started turning <laughs> wasn't even tight so there you have it okay we're down to the last step of the removal I believe and that is to take out these four bolts here and uh, we're gonna bend those and then this whole handlebar cover comes off um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then at this point it looks like we start assembly of the new item uh, as a matter of fact they tell you to bend this I'm not gonna bend it someone might want it who knows uh, matter of fact I might offer it up on uh, spiderlovers.com for free for anybody that wants it anyway um, so we're gonna get that off and continue holy mother of Allen wrenches this is not in the BRP toolkit um, this is a seven let me double check thank God I had one from a kit I had bought yep seven millimeter Allen wrench so holy mother of Batman holy mother of Allen wrenches Batman so make sure you've got this tool before you start and so you don't have to run to the store to get it seven millimeter Allen wrench another tool tip holy mother of get ready to be PO'd <laughs> I almost needed a breaker bar to get these loose. Uh, even with that big Allen wrench I had uh, lengthways. Almost needed a breaker bar. They were on there extremely tight. And with yellow Loctite all the way down the threads, they came out hard all the way. So sitting with that Allen wrench, anyway, it's off. Sitting with that Allen wrench going, er, 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 took some time. My recommendation actually is you can do it. But instead of using an Allen wrench, see if you can get a, a 7 millimeter hex driver on a probably half inch to 3 8 socket. Take them out that way. Trust me, it'll go faster. Uh, you can still do it with the Allen wrench like I did, and uh, uh, it works, but it was very frustrating and time consuming. So uh, we're going to go ahead now and continue on. This is the end of disassembly. Now we're going to start putting on the triaxis handlebars. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. By the way, I said I'd time my, uh, my stuff, and uh, I started this at 10 o'clock a.m. on the dot, and basically it is now 12.31. So complete disassembly of this part was two hours. Now again, <clears throat> some of my hang-ups was some of my aftermarket add-ons that I did that added probably another 15, 20 minutes, or maybe less, to unhook and all that. Also since it's the first time I did it figuring out how to get that off because of the trunk latch that hung me up for about 20 minutes so now that you know how to do it per my video uh, that shouldn't hold you up so all in all if you're uh, just going at this and uh, not taking a lot of breaks or everything I would say about an hour and a half for removal okay so that's my time actually turned out for me two and a half hours but again I think uh, I added an hour due to uh, some frustrations worst case two and a half hours <laughs> so there you have it all right so I said I'd do my time now when I go to do assembly we will time that as well okay, we got the adjustable handlebar base on I've started the new the four new bolts they give you now one problem I have is they do give us torque spec uh, let's see one second it says they want you to torque them to 48 plus or minus 6 I do not have a driver bit that size for my torque wrench so I'm gonna go ahead and torque them down based on feel uh, with my Allen wrench I saw how tight they were coming off I, I'm sure I can get damn close uh, I know some of you guys might say no way you got to use a torque wrench um, well, sorry guys, when you don't have it, you don't have it, so I will make do. Um, but I recommend if you want to do this job right, make sure you get a bit with a socket and a torque wrench to do it. Otherwise, uh, feel it out as I'm going to do. And I'm just going to basically wail on those like I did, um, coming off so I remember the pressure, so I should be close. But that's the way I'm doing it. Aye, aye, another tool add. Original bolts came off with 7mm. These are 8, so you will need an 8mm bit 
for your torque wrench or an 8 millimeter Allen wrench if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. I don't have a torque wrench bit. I'm not going to go get it. I think I can get this tight enough, but I know I'm repeating myself, but it's 8 millimeter. One last thing about this step is a couple things. There's slop in the holes, as you see. So, you know, you probably don't want it crooked. Your steering might be a little off. So, I you can either bias it up or bias it down. That way it's not at least twisted, if you know what I mean. I'm going to bias mine down. Actually, maybe I'll bias it up when I tighten. Yeah, I think I'll bias it up when I tighten. Uh, it's not a whole lot of movement, but again, you don't want it crooked, all right? So it, I think that could be crooked enough that uh, it might kind of show up in the handlebars not being straight, all right? Which, if, which might throw someone off if they're eyeballing this for alignment. But anyway, so I'm going to bias it so at least it's not crooked, all right? I'm biasing it up, all right? Manual doesn't say anything about it, but that's what I'm doing. Next thing, always torque in a cross pattern. Snug, 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 snug. Tighten, 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 tighten. Torque, 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 torque. Got it? Always do that. Man, someone should put a few more words in this manual. So the next thing, they want you to use the adjustment tool to put the handlebars on and drive this long adjustment bolt into that barrel down here until a hole lines up. Now, the way it says it is a little weird. But basically what you're going to do, use the tool, drive that bolt into this barrel until you can look through those holes and you got a straight alignment. The top of the adjustable handlebars up here hit. If you've got this too long, it hits up front and you won't be able to get this hole aligned. So that's about how far I went in on mine to get it. Now I'm lined up and we can put that in. Okay, next up, uh, this drawing was not clear. They want you to put this bolt in, but what I mean it was not clear, by which side does the bolt go in? Uh, versus the uh, nut. So if you look at the angle of this drawing, you can see that that's it there. So the the bolt goes on from the left side of the motorcycle. Okay, nut on the other, and then we're going to torque that to uh, I think it said 25. Sorry, 25 plus or minus two. All right, so we're going to go ahead and torque that up. Uh, this time I think I can do it. I think I have a driver bit for my torque wrench that side size, so we're going to go ahead and torque that properly. Okay, getting there. Now we put the key switch assembly back in. All right. We put in the new bolts they gave us. Uh, they're, oh, the only two in the kit were long 10 millimeter. And those go in there, and we're going to go ahead and torque that to spec and get that done. We'll continue on. Okay, that job's done. Torque down. We put the cables back on, which is basically just feeding that cable in that slot and dropping the barrels in there. We put our key lock back on. Don't put it on upside down. You won't be a happy camper. Okay, remember how I showed you? Quick snap and we're in there. All right, so that's that step. Now the next steps, what they have you do is we're going to start bolting on our grips again, etc., etc., and uh, go from there. By the way, interesting thing, I noticed this tie wrap. So we're going to see, I think what they did was they supplied a tie wrap here. It doesn't show this in the manual that I see anywhere but once you get these cables back in there uh, obviously they want you to tie wrap them so they're not flopping around so that's what those tie wraps are sticking out there anyway so we got four new bolts got the brackets from the original here and we're gonna put those back on actually we got eight bolts in total that's how you know you got the right ones there's eight we'll get these back on come take a look not a hard job there folks I effed up pardon the French so you see I put the key switch in, and I didn't have this cover around the key switch, this bottom cover that we first started with. Don't make that mistake and have to undo them. They give you new screws of Loctite for a reason, and uh, unfortunately I will have to take those out and put new Loctite on them and torque them back up. So don't make the mistake I did. I don't mind showing my mistakes because hopefully it will keep someone else from doing the same thing. A couple of tips when reinstalling this and the, the uh, controls onto the handlebars. One, you'll see there's an arc right here and up in the hand, oops, <sighs> dropped my flashlight. Up in the handlebars you'll see there's a pin right here. See it? Pin. They want you to make sure that that pin is centered in that arc, okay? Additionally, there is a pin on this uh, back bracket and it must be in this hole. Now as you see there is some lateral movement here. 
when before we tighten these up we're going to check the gap distance between here and here as I recall and I should have paid attention when I took apart I believe there was a gap here in other words these were not sitting flush tight up against these possibly it would chafe the plastic due to vibration so we're gonna leave just a small gap here uh, when we tighten these up with this adjustment make sense okay so let's go ahead and get it on and we'll take a look okay I got that bracket snugged up enough and I also test fit the back cover again the idea is to have a gap now as you see whoops cover fell off anyway it doesn't matter as you see if you pull it out you got a big gap push it in you've got no gap so uh, actually mine pushed in all the way leaves a little bit of a gap but your mileage may vary all I'm saying is since this does have an adjustment for you torque down those bolts for the bracket leave yourself a little gap alright mine's pushed in all the way and uh, there's a gap still so that's the way mine's working again your mileage may vary just letting you know hey folks got the other side on just like the this side four bolts one thing and this is gonna be an SM5 issue only that I don't like is the way this is mounted right now it's putting a drastic bend in my uh, hose for the clutch now I'm assuming I'm pretty sure that if I loosen this I can swing this over and by the way I did loosen the handlebars as you see it's not changing that which um, of course makes sense so I gotta relieve that I can't have that hose kinked off like that uh, especially up against the rib that it's hitting right here behind here so I have to loosen this and move this over to relieve that a little bit. Um, I'm hoping I don't get air in my system. I've got the panel off, so at least I can bleed it if I have to, but hopefully I can loosen that enough not to let air in and move that uh, to relieve that hose. So I'm going to do that, and we'll come back check it out. Okay, I was able to loosen that, move it a hair, no fluid leaked out, and I don't have to bleed. But there's a, a balance here because the cover that you get with, there's two covers. They give you actually two left sides, one for SM5, one for SE. So you want to make sure you don't move it too far. that You can't put that cover on, all right? So I'm an SM. You SE5 guys have nothing to worry about in this area, all right? But uh, bottom line is I've got it somewhat centered a little bit off. I've relieved that hose a little bit. Uh, it's not making the sharp bend it was. So just watch for that SM5 guys, okay? Anyway, we're finishing up. We'll continue on. Okay, next step is to get this cover back on, and you reuse the four bolts you took off. They did not give you new ones. And then the step after that is to put this rubber boot thing around. Now, I've already got it snapped in on this side, but I'll give you some tips. See these cup holes? There's these pins that were the old pins right here. So I can get that in there right here that screwed on the old covers or no I guess not this is all part of new assembly anyway you want to make sure you get those rubbers pardon me I'm trying to do this one hand you want to make sure you get these in those otherwise it won't quite fit and it's a little wonky so uh, you want to make sure you get <coughs> pardon me those in there also and then it'll kinda of just snap in place also under here there were two tabs under here which I've already got up under there just make sure they're up under there the instructions talk about it the drawings not too clear but the rubbers have some tabs as you see right here that just make sure they're up under there and this makes that cover fit all nice and then you put in those four screws that hold the rubber to the handlebars okay so go ahead and do that and uh, we'll continue on by the way the four screws are these button heads that hold that rubber on okay uh, don't over torque them because you'll mess up the rubber so just make sure they're tight they're locked tighted so go ahead and put those on okay so one thing I lied about uh, another finless gotcha as I said to hold this cover on you use the original screws the original screws are these long silver ones turns out they do give you four shorter screws to replace that longer screw um, so we're gonna use those okay basically they're uh, bolts with hex, hex heads uh, when I was finishing up I'm like alright what are these four left in the kit now I realize what they're for. Instructions don't really say, so filling you in, that's what they're for.